Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining me for a Wednesday meditation here at the Margate Community Church. Isn't it wonderful that we are living in such peaceful, placid times? No, I haven't lost my mind. And yes, I'm joking. A year ago, who would have imagined a pandemic called COVID-19 completely disrupting our lives, the entire world, our everyday life as we knew it? Last year at this time, we all came to church. We had coffee hour afterwards. We had meetings, fellowship activities, Sunday school. I hope no one gets upset if I make a slightly political statement, but this time last year, I remember a lot of Democratic candidates running for president. Who would have thought that Vice President Joe Biden would be running against incumbent President Trump? Not me. And who would have thought that one year ago exactly, this coming Sunday, I would preach a sermon entitled, For Such a Time as This. You may have been in church that day or not, but I was capitalizing on the fact that it was Halloween. And I told our church children that they could dress up as a princess, a king, a queen, a Bible character, whatever. And I would preach on the story of Queen Esther in the Bible. Do you remember Esther's story? It's a fascinating one, to be sure. In a very succinct version, King Ahasuerus needs a new queen, and so he runs a sort of beauty contest to find one. Esther, a beautiful Jewish girl, wins the contest and becomes the new queen. A short time later, an evil man named Haman comes up with a plot to kill all the Jews and to seize their property and possessions. What makes the plot even more intriguing is that Esther has never told anyone that she is actually Jewish. Her uncle, Uncle Mordecai, basically reminds her that she better come up with a plan to stop Haman's plan or she will be as dead as all the other Jews. Esther says there's nothing she can do. And then Uncle Mordecai wisely makes this statement that it may be true that she can't do anything, but God will raise up someone who will save God's people. And then he makes this marvelous statement. Perhaps you have been placed here for such a time as this. I don't wanna spoil a story that you could read for yourself in the Bible, but to make it short and end it, Esther did her praying and God guided her to come up with a plan to save all the Jews and have Haman get his just reward. You probably remember and know that Esther is, is honored to this day with that beautiful Jewish holiday named Purim. In case you think that Esther's story is rather unique in the Bible, you might be mistaken. I won't tell a lot of stories today, honest, but just think for a moment of Joseph's story in the book of Genesis. He saved a lot of people, including his family, the sons of Jacob, who would become the people of Israel. Joseph's story is so fascinating because so many terrible things happened to him. He's sold into slavery by his brothers, He's then thrown into prison in Egypt. And because he can interpret a dream by, for Pharaoh, he is made prime minister of Egypt, which makes him uh, available to save the lives of hundreds of people from starvation because of a terrible famine in Egypt and the whole Middle East. And of course, he saves God's people, his family. There are lots of other people in the Bible and throughout history that seem to be coincidentally in places that influence the outcome of the world, or a pe person that is coincidentally in a place that saves just one person's life. 
Sometimes things in life appear to happen randomly, don't they? But don't be fooled. I don't believe there are any coincidences in this life. In my opinion, coincidence is just God acting anonymously. I think it's worthwhile to pause here for a moment and ask ourselves, have we been placed where we are for such a time as this? Do we have a particular job for such a time as this? Are we out of work for such a time as this? Are we in this church or another one for such a time as this? Are we a neighbor in a grocery line at a Zoom meeting for such a time as this? I have no idea what the future holds for us no one does. Who knows what will happen? I sure don't, but God does. I believe that this seemingly out of control world is never out of God's control. Not today, not next week, not next year, not any year. God will still be in control. And I take a lot of comfort in that fact. I remember when I was a little girl going to St. John's by the Sea in Ventnor that we sang a hymn and the first line of the hymn was this, God is working his purpose out as year succeeds to year. I still believe that. And perhaps you and I have been placed where we are for such a time as this, as God works God's purpose out. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, we are so glad and relieved that you are not only the creator of our world, but you are still in control of it. We put our lives in your capable hands, knowing that you will continue to care for us and place us where we can be your hands and words, your partners, as you work your purposes out in our world. Amen. I hope you have a lovely rest of the week. If you're planning to be in church on Sunday, please remember to call Susan Lothian and make your reservation. I hope to see you then as we celebrate All Saints Day. The children are invited to come in, in costume because it's the day after Halloween. I won't be preaching on Queen Esther, however. And at the communion service, we will remember those saints who have gone on to the church triumphant in this past year. God bless you all. Take care. Bye-bye.